Hi, I'm Matt from ArcESB, and welcome to our video series on data mapping, where I cover all of the features of the XML map connector. This is the fifth video of the series, and I'll be talking about loop nodes, which allow for a special kind of for each loop mapping that removes a layer of hierarchy in the XML data. The first video in this series covers the basic for each loop, so make sure to check that one out if you haven't already. The first thing to understand about loop nodes is that they are virtual nodes. I mentioned virtual nodes in the conditionals video, but as a brief recap, virtual nodes are nodes that show up in the XML map designer, but don't actually show up in the XML output. In other words, virtual nodes are purely logical. They implement some mapping logic without being part of the mapping content. This will become more clear as we work through an example. Loop nodes are very similar to regular for each loop mappings, so the trick here is to understand the difference. I think the best way to learn the difference is through an example, so I've come up with a contrived mapping project that requires a loop node. First, we'll attempt this mapping with a regular for each loop, and we'll see why that doesn't quite work. Then we'll redo the mapping with a loop node and see the difference. Alright, so here's the sample input and output data for our mapping. The input is on the left, and you'll see that the values from the child elements need to be mapped into data elements here in the output on the right. The trick is that the output doesn't have this extra layer of parent elements that the input has, so we need to remove that layer of hierarchy. Okay, let's jump into the XML map connector, and I've already configured the source and destination templates with our input and output, and let's try doing this mapping without a loop node. We know that we need some sort of for each loop in this mapping, because we don't know ahead of time how often this parent and child structure will repeat. Well, a reasonable first approach would be to map parent to items, like this and then map child to data. And I can delete this extra data element since the for each loop will ensure I have the right number of data elements. Okay, so this looks reasonable. So let's save it and run a test file through, see what we get. I'll go to the input tab and generate a test file, which is the same as my source template, and send it through the mapping. All right, now I'll go to the output tab and download the result. And once it's downloaded, I'll go ahead and open it up. And we can see if our mapping was correct. All right, so as you might have noticed, there's a problem here. And it's that this root items element repeats, and we don't want it to repeat. We want a single root items that contains multiple data elements. So this didn't quite work. Well, let's return to our mapping and fix this problem. The problem is, we don't want items to repeat, so we can't establish a for each loop there like we have now. We also can't establish a for each loop with data, one, because it's a leaf element, and two, we need child mapped to data. So we need another node that we can use to establish a for each loop but it needs to not actually show up in the output XML. That's the entire point of a loop node. It's virtual, so it doesn't show up in the output, but it lets you establish a for each loop. So we'll go ahead and restart this mapping, but this time before I map the for each loop, I'll right click here and select new loop to create a loop node. Now I'll establish the for each between the parents and this new loop node, then just map child to data like before. All right, so let's save this and now run the same test file through. So it's the same process for generating the test file here in the input tab. And once I've sent it through, I can once again find it here in the output tab and download it and open it up. All right, so here we see the structure that we wanted, a single items element at the root and then repeated data elements inside it. You'll notice that loop node I created doesn't appear anywhere here in the output. So hopefully that clarifies the difference between loop nodes and regular for each loops. But let's take a moment and talk generally about when a mapping project should include a loop node. The thing to notice about the example we just worked through is that the loop node reduces the levels of hierarchy in the XML data. The input data had two levels of hierarchy, parent within items and then child within parent. The output data just had one level of hierarchy, data within items. The fact that the loop nodes don't show up in the output means that an entire level of hierarchy doesn't show up in the output. So, anytime your mapping project requires reducing the levels of hierarchy in the XML, it's likely that you'll want to use a loop node. And that's it for loop nodes. Thanks for watching. And as always, you can find more resources and even a free trial of the application at rksb.com.